The wait is over and boat customizations is here. Black Salt Games, the team of four developers behind Dredge, has released version 1.3 to the public. I will be breaking down everything that is new and giving some tips and tricks on how to catch the new crabberations. My name is Ban Shredded Cheese, and I'm a streamer on Twitch and a YouTuber who focuses on all things indie games. I will be breaking down the updates released in Dredge version 1.3, including the new features, adjustments, and fixes. So feel free to let that panic meter reset, stock up on some crab pots and let's jump right in. First and foremost, let's talk about boat customization. Get ready for a new layer of excitement because a new character has set up shop in Little Maro, the painter. He will set up his shop in Little Maro once you unlock the dredging gear, so you won't be able to customize your boat right away. Once the painter has moved in, you can transform your boat's appearance to match your style. The painter starts with some basic options, but the real adventure begins when you discover additional paint ingredients and unique flag designs to truly make your boat one of a kind. These paint and flag upgrades are unlocked by finding the flags at shipwrecks and by catching the new crabberations I will talk about next. The color options can be applied to the roof and hull, so you can mix and match colors, flags, and more to fit your style. When I was playing around with the color combinations, I made a few designs that I really enjoyed, including a Halloween style that I used for most of my playing. Dredge has introduced in the 1.3 update several new additions to the roster, the crab aberrations or crabberations. These bizarre and eerie crystals stations will test your patience and keep you on edge as you encounter them on your ocean adventure. There is a new aberrant version of all of the crabs in the game, with most being used in unlocking additional colors of paint. If you are specifically targeting the crabberations, I would recommend stocking up on crab pots and getting ready to settle in for a bit of a grind. My strategy was to buy enough crab pots to be able to place two or three in each region of the map. I had 11 total, but having more would definitely be more useful and help speed things along. I then ran a figure eight motion around the map, checking and repairing crab pots at the Wandering Trader or Shipwright. After about an hour and a half, I managed to catch them all, making me the best, like no one ever was. If you find yourself getting confused about what crabberations make what colors, the best advice I can give without putting a full chart on the screen is that each color coincides with a different region. The colors are then sorted in the menu in order that you would travel to each region following the main storyline. Some quick other additions in Dredge 1.3 include new shipwrecks scattered throughout the world and a filter tab in the encyclopedia to be able to sort by all the crabs in the game, making it easier to figure out where the crabberations can be found. Alongside the new content, some key adjustments and tweaks have been made to better balance the overall gameplay and feel. The two items with updates are equipment tooltips and rebalanced crab pots. The game now reveals a previously hidden statistic called aberration catch bonus. This statistic is the additional catch rate that certain rods give to allow the player to catch aberrations. The statistic will prove useful to anyone attempting to catch those harder to find aberrants and they will now be able to better help their chances. Additionally, some of these values on certain rods have been given a little buff to promote further progression in the research of the higher end tiers. The crab pots and dredge have also undergone a slight rebalancing. Now all crab pots provide you with an aberration catch bonus. The catch? Well, other than crabs, the higher tier and special pots offer a more substantial bonus, meaning the progression of research in the crab pots will also be a smarter strategic decision as well. Further speaking, on strategy, the catch rate and duration for the mouth of the deep pot has been trimmed down, meaning it is no longer the same overpowered crab pot it once was. These two adjustments were felt in my playing of the game while trying to catch the crabberations. I assumed the mouth of the deep would be enough to catch what I needed in Greater Morrow alone, and I ended up stuck twirling my thumbs for a few in-game days before accepting I would need to buy and drop another crab pot in that area. A handful of bug fixes have also been introduced to remove the fear of game crashes and corrupted save files and put the panic back into when the Leviathan will show up next. A quick overview of what some of these fixes are include an issue involving the screen getting stuck when clicking on the boat upgrade purchase button too quickly has been fixed. Seafloor depths will now display more in line with what the player can visually see and not incorrectly display 100 plus meters. An issue where some achievements would not trigger immediately if the last thing they required was for you to catch a crab pot has been fixed. Players can no longer get stuck on the map screen if it is switched to another screen while the marker is being placed as well as a few other small fixes for language fonts and animation issues. That is everything you need to know about the latest update along the roadmap Black Salt Games has announced. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what new aberration is your favorite. Don't forget to subscribe as the next update will be the highly anticipated Iron Haven DLC. And feel free to check out this video to see all of my dredge update predictions and try counting how many I guessed correctly. I will see you all next time.